Hey folks, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about different ways of communicating between touch designer processes and other touch designer processes or between touch designer and other apps. We all know that there's so many communication protocols out there and I know it can be tricky for a lot of people to figure out which ones they want to use. So I thought a great video for this week would be to talk about a bunch of my favorite protocols that I use and a high level of how I choose between them. So the first thing we're going to do is open up our op create dialog here and let's focus on tops first because texture sharing is something that you probably are going to do more often than not. Now there are three main protocols that I like using and the way I kind of differentiate between which direction I'm going to go in is whether it's a local project running on the same GPU kind of on the same single GPU system or whether it's kind of a more advanced project that maybe is taking advantage of multiple computers or if it's taking advantage of even multiple GPUs on the same computer. Now, if I'm kind of running that more simple or straightforward project might be a good way to put it, I immediately lean on Spout. Now, Spout is a fantastic and natively integrated texture sharing protocol inside of Touch Designer. It is supported by so many different applications. It would be very tough to find an application in this day and age that's used professionally that doesn't support Spout yet, or at least doesn't have a plugin for it. You know, when you're talking about things like Unreal and Unity and these things, it's very easy to go and find a quick way to get Spout into there. Now, one of the really great things about Spout is that it is a texture sharing that happens on the GPU itself. And what this means is for all intents and purposes, there's very little overhead because it's not like the GPU is actually physically taking the image, moving it to either the CPU or some other kind of resource, and then back to the other application. What happens is behind the scenes, one application tells the other application, hey, here in memory is essentially where my texture is. You can go get it from there. Now that's great because it works really well with uh, high resolution content if you're gonna send it back and forth between two different touch designer instances, and it works really well with high frame rate content as well. Now, one of the caveats with working with Spout, and this is where our branch we were talking about before, because Spout is happening locally on the GPU, it does have some fallback modes where it can transfer through the CPU, but I highly recommend you don't use those modes. Really, you really want to use this when it's same project or same computer, single GPU, everything bundled together. That's where Spout really shines. Now, if you go off into the other direction and you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, my project's a little bit more complicated. Maybe I have multiple computers. Maybe I'm using GPU affinity to put one project on one GPU, put another project on another GPU to split up that processing. Then I'm looking at two other different protocols. The first one is NDI, and the second is our touch in and out DATs. Now, if you've been working in the industry at all, especially on the broadcast side of things, you'll be very familiar with NDI. NDI is, is gotten widespread industry adoption and it's hard to find a project that involves video signals moving between different systems and application that doesn't work with NDI. And just like Spout NDI has gained such wide traction in the industry, it's very hard to find an application that doesn't have some way of sending or receiving NDI. Now, NDI is great because it really is an all-in-one easy-to-use solution. Everything works on names. Generally, you don't have to worry too much about the network, so you basically just name a stream get on another computer, get on another process on the same uh, computer, but maybe on a different GPU, and you're instantly gonna find that name stream and you just click on it and you got that texture sharing happening. Now, one of the great things, but also it's a little bit of a devil-edged sword with NDI, is that we don't really have control over the compression. Now, NDI's compression is pretty good. It tries to optimize between quality and not taking up too much bandwidth on your network. And that can be great generally, especially if you're sending around, you know, things like screen shares or webcams between different computers, that's fantastic. But where that doesn't really work as well is when you're trying to send data between two different computers or instances of touch designer on different GPUs. And that really is becoming more and more of a common workflow when you start thinking about things like particle systems that keep all of their information inside of a texture. Or if you start talking about things like sending point cloud information or you know especially with a lot of the new point file in tops or these point transform tops a lot of that kind of point cloud work is happening on the data side and the textures and when you apply compression algorithms to those it can actually warp some of the data which is not what we want and one of the nice things about touch in and out is that in the touch out top here you actually have the ability to select which codec you would like to use and one of the great things is that here we have an option for uncompressed. 
And this is just gonna send the raw RGB channels from one touch out to the other touch in top. Now this is great, especially like I said, if you're sending data, you don't want compression, you don't want anything you know, playing with the data at all in any kind of way. You really just want that one-to-one -one exact data to get across. Now this does come at the cost of taking more network bandwidth, but when you're working with things like particle systems in a distributed rendering setup, this can be invaluable. Now with that said, that's kind of the high level approach I take on the texture sharing side of things. So I highly recommend if any of these sound useful to you, go on Spout's website, go look more into NDI, look more into touch in and out. You can learn about all these things on the derivative wiki or on their respective websites. Now the next big family that has communication protocols are chops. And you've probably seen lots of different ways of sending chop channels around. But I would say in my experience, the time-tested way that I've gone about it is using OSC. OSC is very simple to use. It's so widely supported by almost every application except uh, Ableton at this point is kind of the outlier that doesn't natively support OSC uh, unless that's come out in a super recent release of it. But OSC is so widely supported, so easy to use, uses named channels. You don't have to worry too much about networking behind the scenes. And I love OSC. It's fast, it's responsive, it's pretty reliable. It uses UDP as its base layer, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, so it's really resilient to things like small network dropouts, whereas more connection-oriented protocols can often get a little bit tripped up if your network dips slightly uh, for any reason. Now, OSC is great. It can send lots of channels, but one of the tricky parts becomes when you want to send audio maybe between two different applications. Because even though we use audio inside of the chop land, OSC, while technically it is supposed to be able to support audio, because of how OSC is implemented in all these different applications, you'll find that most of them keep to a very general and very simple approach to implementing OSC, which is just sending simple values across. Now, if we were gonna talk about sending audio between multiple different applications, two things that immediately come to mind for me are Dante, and Dante is something that you're gonna find a lot in the commercial world, especially if you're working with AV integrators or working on office buildings, or even in a lot of broadcast places because Dante is for audio what NDI is for video, which is it's a really reliable network-based sharing of audio data. And it can scale up and down. For a lot of our purposes, it's pretty cost-effective because all you really need is to either get Dante Virtual Sound Card or Dante Via to be able to send that data between a lot of different places. Now, while that's all fine and great, if you're working on something that's a little bit simpler, maybe even on the same computer, uh, one of the apps and protocols that I've really learned to love is VB Audio's VB Cable. And essentially what this does is it makes a virtual sound card, so a virtual microphone and a virtual speaker on your system that are actually behind the scenes just wired together. So you could have one application outputting to that VB Audio speaker and the other application can get the VB Audio microphone and get that same audio across. It's super easy to install. There's a version for free that you can use. And for most purposes, you know, if you're sending stereo or maybe four or five channels, this can be a really easy thing to set up. Now there are more advanced versions of VB Audio, especially VBand, which is kind of the network version of it. But I think at that point, if you're starting to get more into network side of audio, Dante is probably where you want to end up. Now, before we talk about SOPs, because SOPs are an interesting one, we're going to talk about DATs real quick. Now, DATs are a tricky one because there's so many different ways that you could send data between two different applications. If you're working specifically in a touch designer to touch designer environment, I would say, you know what, using a touch in and out DAT is totally fine. And one of the great things about using touch in and out DATs are that they actually respect the structure of your data. So for example, if I had a table, I can make a table DAT, fill it with a bunch of information, send it to a touch out, and then on the receiving end, on my touch in, boom, I just have that table perfectly recreated on the other side. I don't have to do too much extra parsing. I don't have to turn the table into a JSON message and send that over, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. But especially for a lot of beginners getting into touch designer or people who are working on simpler projects, touch in and out may be good enough for you. Now, one thing I always recommend when using touch in and out is to actually switch the protocol over to UDP. And for similar reasons that we we're talking about with 
OSC and how it uses UDP, I find a lot of the time in these kind of media network environments, more often than not, you're going to get, you know, some drop packets here or there. You're going to get some connection handshake issues. And I found that over the years, those can create bugs inside my software where, oh, all of a sudden, for some reason, one system went down for a few seconds on the network, came back up, and the handshake between the two of them didn't happen successfully, and now they're not communicating. And that's because TCP is fundamentally a connection-oriented protocol, which means that before any data goes back and forth, the client and the server have to say, hey, we agree on actually talking to each other. Whereas UDP is more of a, well, it's a non-connection-oriented protocol, which means that even without any handshaking, you're going to assume the other person is alive and well, and you're just going to keep sending data. And if they ever come online, they're going to start receiving data. And if they go offline, it's no sweat off my back. So that's one thing I would recommend if you are using touch in and out. I found more often than not lately, using UDP ends up being a much better experience. Now, aside from that, if you start going down into more heavier uses of data transmission between two different apps, I would say, especially if you start getting out of touch designer to touch designer, maybe you're going touch designer to Unreal or touch designer to Notch, then I start to think about UDP as my solution. And UDP in and out fundamentally is very similar to what's happening behind the scenes when you set the touch in and out to UDP mode. Except in this case, you're not going to have touch designer helping you with setting up the tables and transmitting those across, which is actually a good thing because as tables start to get bigger and bigger, more than just you know, 10, 20, 50 rows, I would say it starts to become a little bit unreliable in how it sends that data across. And at that point, I would suggest going for just straight native UDP in and out. And then what you'd have to do is figure out what the best way for you to package maybe a table or a string into either a JSON or XML or any kind of more structured data protocol that you want to use to send that data across the UDP. Nice thing about that is just like we talked about OSC, it is UDP is so fundamentally accepted everywhere as a great communication protocol, it is going to be really hard to find an application that doesn't have some kind of UDP input or output. Now, with that said, we come to SOPs, and SOPs are a tricky one because unlike all the other families we've talked about so far, they don't really have a native, you know, SOP over the network SOP or, you know, geometry over the network SOP. If you want to transmit SOP data, you actually have to kind of make a choice in your head which family of operators will best let me deal with this data and send it across to another application or touch designer instance. And what I mean by that is if you have something like, let's go ahead and make a sphere SOP here. If I have this sphere SOP, I either have to decide to convert all of its data into a chop format using something like a SOP to chop. Now I have TX, TY, TZ, and of course I can turn on things like normals or whatever other attributes I want to pull out of that geometry. And now that I'm on the SOP side of things, I can prepare this to go out over whether I'm talking about OSC or any of the other protocols that we are familiar with. Now the other side of things is I could go into DAT format. So I could do something like a SOP to DAT. And now I have the same data, but represented in a table format, which then I can decide, hmm, is this a lot of data? You know, I can middle click on and see 700 rows by nine columns. I would consider that a lot of data to just send over a touch in and out. And what I would recommend is most of the time when you're dealing with larger and larger data, you generally want to avoid DATs anyways, because they're just going to slow down your system a lot. So what I would recommend a lot of times when you're working with SOPs and wanting to send that data between different instances, is think about how can I either A, get this into channel format that is going to be easy to send over OSC. And even this one would kind of be a lot of data to send over OSC. So then my next thought goes to, okay, well, let me go from my geometry in the SOP into the channel format. And then let me actually convert this into a texture using something like a chop to SOP. Because then what I can do is now that I have all this data and texture, I can say, okay, well, if I need 100% data accuracy, I can use touch in and out top and set it to uncompressed. Or if a tiny bit of compression here and there doesn't hurt me, I can use something like NDI. And if it's a local, you know, local system, single GPU, and I just need to send data between maybe one project, setting up particle systems and another one rendering them, 
I could even go over to siphon and spout. So SOPs are definitely the trickiest because you're going to have to make a decision about how you want to arrange that data. You know, for example, maybe if it was only a couple of points in 3D space that we're just referencing for camera positions or person positions, then you know what, maybe actually converting it into a DAT table will work out fine. So with that said, I hope that gives you a good high level overview of a lot of the protocols that I've been using over all my career of, of communication with different systems. Just to give a quick recap, Spout is kind of my favorite for local texture sharing once it becomes something that either has to go over multiple GPUs or between different systems. I try to make a decision between NDI and using touch in and out tops. When it comes to chops, I'm all in on OSC. Very rarely am I using anything other than OSC. If on the off chance it becomes a lot trickier to kind of format my data for OSC itself, you know, similarly I can always rely back in on the touch in and out but I prefer to just go with OSC. On the DAT side of things, like I mentioned, doing things with UDP in and outs is generally what I would consider the better, more structured, more reliable way, but you can also use touch in and out DATs and just make sure you set them to UDP mode. So with that said, I hope that's helpful and enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.